and he's swinging Jolie on a little swing and I look over and I go, oh my God, hi. And I just, that's just like what came out. And he was like, hi, how are you? And I was like, I'm good. I'm like, you don't know me. And, and I was just like, I'm sorry. I just, I saw you. And he was like, it's okay. Have a great day. And I was like, you too. <laughs> So I'm like, one day I want to like tell him that story, like on a set, like working with him. And that is Jana Kramer talking about her dream co-star, Jason Bateman. She ran into him at a park and he didn't know who she was. <laughs> it's a really funny story. Cannot wait to dig into that. But I had so much fun kicking things off with Rob Thomas of Matchbox 20 last week. And this week, cannot wait to bring you this conversation with Jana Kramer. She talks about her big break that led to that popular show, One Tree Hill. Now, maybe you know her from One Tree Hill or Hallmark movies or Lifetime movies or country music because she's very versatile. She acts and she sings. And she's also a mother of two, soon to be a mom of three. And we say mom because, you guys, we go deep with our Michigan and Midwestern accents. We're both from Michigan, so had so much fun with that. But without further ado, here is Jenna Kramer talking about One Tree Hill and finding love after divorce. You know what happened, Jenna? We're both drinking bubblies. I saw you. Oh, drink- yay. <laughs> so you're, I don't like Waterloo. I like no. bubbly. Um. I don't think I can go on because I just discovered, we're talking about sparkling water. I just discovered the brand Waterloo grape and I'm obsessed with it. So this is the grape, well, this is blackberry bubbly sparkling water, but I I feel like this has more bubble than the Waterloo. I'm very much like on the pregnancy journey right now where it has to have enough bubbles, but not too much (laughs) bubbles. Like Topo's too many bubbles. So, oh, and I was going to say, yeah, you're pretty limited as to what you can and can't have right now because are you yeah. are you approaching your third trimester? You're close, right? I am almost I'm like very close, yeah. Okay. How do you not look pregnant at all? Like, I mean, oh, granted, no, I, I like only see you like chest. Bam. Oh, it's still <laughs> a little teeny like it's a baby pumpkin in there. Like like a little uh, a little one. It, yeah, no. It's it I, I, someone the other day at a show was like Oh my God, you look huge. And I'm like, thanks. What? Like, I know. But people, like, do, they just don't know what they're saying sometimes. You do know they, what I mean? Do like, they want to rub your belly? Do they say, can I come rub your belly? Does that make you uncomfortable yeah. and skeevy out a little bit? Only if it's people I don't know. Like okay. my girlfriends were like, well, like, you know, put their hands on it and feel the baby move. But when it comes to, yeah, complete people I don't know, I'm like, oh. You're like, oh, that's a little, that's a little weird. Yeah. So I don't want to bury the Hi. lead. It's so good to see you again. You and too. congratulations. Last time I talked, um, I don't know if you knew you were pregnant and you certainly weren't engaged at that time. So a lot has happened. So we've got a lot to mm-hmm. catch up in a short period of time. You ready to jump yes. in? Yes. Um, yes, let's do it. First of all, this is two Michigan girls talking. I was born and raised in J-Town, Jackson, and you're a Rochester uh, Hills girl. So yeah. Went to school in Rochester Hills. I was born in Detroit, but I was um, raised in like Washington Township. So okay. we were kind of like the outskirts, yeah. but Amazing. still Rochester schools. Yeah. Okay. If you're from Michigan, you you have to have an allegiance. Uh, go blue. Michigan. Okay. Go blue. That's, right. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay. I just I can't I can't, uh, I can't do I can't do the green. My my um was it cousin played uh, f- uh baseball for Michigan uh, actually for the World Series. And then um, my uncles all went to Michigan. So I'm just like a very go blue kind of girl. Same. And I'm playing in Ohio in a couple of weeks. And I'm like, eek. Oh. <laughs> Every time I come to Ohio, I'm always like, hey, I, I shouldn't say I'm a Michigan fan. But <laughs> here I go. Here. I lived in Columbus for four I actually lived in Ohio for 12 years for college and post-college. And then I lived in Columbus. And for those listening, you're like, why do I care? That's where Ohio State University is located in Columbus. And Michigan and Ohio State are like bitter rivals like we hate each other yeah yeah like, do can you play euchre oh are you kidding me i love euchre the left oh, and right bower oh yes. yes okay because i just had euchre night the other night i taught all my friends here in nashville how to play okay after the baby yeah we'll mm-hmm. have euchre night with some choice beverages a lot not bu- bubbly water okay? please yes yes yes, yes. and I, I, my michigan accent might come out a little bit it's real nasally and unattractive so it, oh it yeah does. my my fiance i'm always like mom and he's like mom mom what's mom and i'm like <laughs> I was like, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> but then again, his his accent's way hotter than mine. So. Yeah. So let's speak about his hot accent. And um, his name's Alan Russell, right? He's a mm-hmm. soccer coach. And this kind of happened. Oh, oh, football. I'm sorry. 
Yes. Football. football. I know. I'm trying. I'm like, it's soccer, babe. I have yes. to say soccer in the football States because people life. won't understand. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so he – you guys – how did this all happen? It kind of came out of nowhere. I mean, you've had he, – Yeah, like, he DM'd me on Instagram and then I was just like, he lives in London. Like, how is this really going to work, you know? And You're in uh, Nashville. And, I'm in Nashville. I've got two kids here. So it's like, how, how is that? How does that work? Um, but he was pretty persistent. And yeah, I just was like, you know what? Why not? Like, if anything, it, I don't have the kids this, you know, uh, leading up to Christmas. So I was like, if anything, I'll just, you know, go there for a fun little winter vacay. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then it turned into a little winter romance. <laughs> Sounds like a Hallmark movie or a Lifetime movie. It literally was. I was living my own – yeah, I was living my own Lifetime film for sure. Was was this just this past Christmas? Yeah. Well, we wow. met um, We met right before Thanksgiving. Okay. So, And yeah. this, this kind of came out of the blue. So he slides into your DMs. Now you're expecting your third child, your first together. Mm-hmm. You guys are engaged yep. to be married. Uh, he mm-hmm. has – you have two kids from your previous relationship. He has, I think, a couple of kids from his previous relationship. He's got um, he's got a son and then okay. a stepdaughter, his okay. wife had, ex-wife had. Yeah. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Jana, I mean, you couldn't have scripted this. I mean, he, you guys <laughs> seem perfect for each other, and you weren't really looking for it at the time. Mm-mm, I wasn't. I finally got to a place where I was just like, you know what? I'm just really good on my own. I'm happy. Yeah. And that was when they say that's usually when it happens and and it did. Mm-hmm. So that was um that was that was really cool because I people always say that. I'm like, yeah, 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 okay. But mm-hmm. it was it was until I got to the place with myself that I was like, I really just I'm I'm good. Like I'm happy. I don't yeah. need anyone to make me happy. Like I'm happy on my own. I love myself. And then he came around. Yeah, that's amazing. And I, I, I'm a firm believer that you have to be a whole person. You don't look for somebody else to complete you. So like, I know it sounds bad. But I'm like, John, you're my better whole, like, but W-H-O-L-E, I say that to my husband. Right. Because right. we're not half, like I, we're complete and, and together, sure. you know, yes, we are one. But I know you have a, a book coming out in October. Yeah. Um, I'm really excited to dig into that, the next chapter. And it's yeah. called Making Peace with Hard Memories, Finding Hope All Around Me and Clearing Space for Good Things to Come. So, Janet, you, you've you been married a couple of times, okay, and and it didn't work out. It's, people are going to have strong opinions one way or the other. How do you continue mm-hmm. to believe um, that you're just as worthy of good things um, yeah. after everything that's happened in your life? And I'm so happy for you, by the way. Thank you. So I kind of look at it as I've truly, in my mind, I've only been married once because my first guy, I knew him for two weeks, we went to Vegas when I was 19. Like that's not a marriage, yeah. right? That's yeah. Some, yeah. something young and dumb. I was 19 years old. Um, you know, he ended up going to jail for attempted murder on me. Like the whole thing was like, oh, so wow. that was dissolved. So like we were never, no one knew we were married. Like, so I, you know, yes, legally, was it a piece of paper that we did something young and dumb and stupid? Yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. So then the second was, we dated for three years. I walked down the aisle, knew he wasn't my person. Like it was just one of those things where I was like, I was always Mm -hmm. chasing love. And then when I finally got the love from that person, I was like, wait a minute, it's not you. Like it was, it's always been like, Mm -hmm. I've always, um, chased and chased because I wanted the person to love me. And then, but it was never about that person. It was about like, you know, I'd never got that love from that father figure. So then I was chasing it. And then when I got it, I was like, oh, actually, that's not, this isn't what I want. So that relationship was one week. So I, when I look at it and I'm like, they're like, oh, you've been married three times. I'm like, to me, a marriage, like my last marriage, I, he, I was with him for seven years. Like that's mm-hmm. a marriage. We were in the marriage. Like we, we fought, we struggled, we loved. Um, and we had a couple kids together, right? We had a couple kids together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that is like, for me, like, when I look at it on paper, yeah, it's like I've been married one time, yeah, and I didn't want that marriage to to fall or to end. You know, I was I fought like hell to keep that relationship together, yeah. even when you know things kept happening and I kept finding out things, and it was a ended up just being a very toxic relationship. And um, you know, we obviously I finally filed for divorce after the last incident, so it's it's one of those things where it's like no matter what we go through in life, like I'm never going to be like, well, I'm not going to trust again or I'm not going to love again because then that's just like, that's not 
that doesn't sound fun. I'm like, I deserve love, you know, and I finally believe that now. That's the, that's the difference. Mm-hmm. So before, I never believed that I deserve love. Now I do. How do you get to that point where you believe good things for yourself? Um, and I talk about this in the book, too. I went to this place, and I mean, I just, I didn't realize how many messages that I was holding on to from childhood or from past relationships or abusive relationships that, that like, I was believing all their narrative that I didn't even think anything goodness from, from like, I didn't, I didn't think I was worthy of it. I didn't think I was good enough. I didn't think that I deserved it. I thought I was the problem. That was a common denominator. And, you know, it was, um, it just took a lot of work to really just dig in and just change the beliefs and, and, you know, do some really hard work. It was, it wasn't fun, but it was also the most like liberating thing too. That's, yeah, you put the hard work in, and I think that's key right there. Um, yeah. So we're going to do some viewer questions at the very end. There were okay. a lot, but I only selected a couple. And yes, one of them kind of ties into this right now, so I'm just going to jump ahead uh-huh. to that one. Yeah, let's do it. And I'm like, people, could you give me your name instead of your handle? This is from Cat Purrs. Okay, so Cat oh. Purrs <laughs> with a couple of Z. <laughs> she wants to know, Jana, how were you able to overcome your feelings of betrayal and distrust and let yourself love again? And you touched on that a second ago. Yeah, again, I think it's just one of those things where people are going to make their choices, like no matter how hard I would have and, and I did the last like couple years of my marriage, I was so controlling and because I just was like, well, if I can control this, he won't cheat on me. At the end of the day, people are going to cheat if they want to cheat like my ex found a way in any realm possible to, you know, to be able to cheat. So with my new relationship, I'm like, it's and it was just to carry that like mm-hmm. mistrust and detective feeling and just like, well, he's just going to cheat or it's just to carry that was so heavy that when I walked into this new relationship, I'm like, I have to not label him as like my ex or any man before him. And it's like, because when I look at like my past relationship, my ex showed me who he was the entire time. I just didn't believe him. Like like they always say, people show you who they are, believe them. Like he showed me and I can look at all the things and go, well, Jana, duh. So when I look at, you know, my, the new relationship, when you want to like try and trust again, you will see what you need to see. And you have to then trust that like your intuition, the things that, you know, um, you're seeing, whether it, you know, if it's, if it's not good, like that's who they are. They're going to keep doing that most likely thing. So with, you know, Alan, like he's never given me a doubt, a, like a speckle of a doubt that like he doesn't love, respect me, like that, you know, that he's going to be faithful. Like he is, um, everything that he does aligns with his words, his mm-hmm. actions and his words align. And for me, I'm like, I don't want to live my life not trusting someone because again, what it does to me is like, it doesn't let me um, soak up the goodness of, of, of what's actually happening. Yeah. I, I don't know him. Um, I only know of him and what I've seen him post, but he seems like just that he loves and honors and respects you just the way he talks about he you. Does. He seems yeah. very steadfast and he's, yeah, really, he is. I mean, and he's, he's really just hot. like, Sorry. he's, he's so sexy. He's I just am like, but, <laughs> but he's just, yeah. I mean, he's my biggest supporter. He's, um, you know, in the past, like, being the birds of breadwinner, like that, you know, guys say they like that and then they use it against me in the end. Well, I did this because you were so busy or because it was all about you and yeah. your schedule. And it's like, well, I, I, I didn't, I'm sorry. Like, so with Alan, I mean, he truly genuinely like supports me and, and then the respect too. Like I, yeah, I've I never been respected in this way. Okay. So you are a Michigan girl. And you are a mom. That's how we talk in Michigan. Um, mm-hmm. How did you get your first break? I know most people know you from One Tree Hill, Alex Dupree. You launched yeah. your acting career in the early 2000s, I think. Then you launched mm-hmm. your music career in 2012 and went on to become the female, new female vocalist of the year at the CMAs. But how? what was your big break? Like when you look back at the trajectory, that's a hard word to say, trajectory of your life, <laughs> what was your big break, Jana? Definitely One Tree Hill. Uh, that was you know, my first series regular role. And then the fact that they turned my character into a singer was, which is how I got my record deal. And then the music followed. I mean, if it wasn't for Tree Hill, the Tree Hill fans, I would have never had a music career. That's just like, I know that, like, Mm. I'm not like, you know, the big Carrie Underwood vocals. Like I, I got lucky because of the show that I was on and the support of the amazing fans. So that was definitely my, my break in both acting and then singing. 
How did that whole thing happen? So again, you're a Michigan girl. I think you moved to, mm-hmm. I don't want to put words in your mouth, moved to California, but how did the whole acting thing come about? Who was part of it? Was it hard work hustle? Was it right place, right time? I think I read that your acting debut was in an independent horror film called Dead <laughs> slash Undead. <laughs> Haven't seen it, Dead Undead. Yeah, no, so I didn't do, I didn't, yeah, mm -mm. Uh, not many people did, but I didn't do theater in high school. I just, uh, I just knew I always wanted to be an actress and uh, right before I graduated high school, I can't remember the exact timeline, but I did, yeah, I did this like little horror film, um, just like one of those little indies. And then when I was waitressing in, 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 um, in Michigan, I was about to graduate high school and Aiden Turner from all my children was there. And I just was like, shamelessly like, here's my, here's my headshot. You know, I've, I've done no nothing, but here you go. Like, can you give it to the cast and director of all my children? And I just stayed on him. Like, um, we exchanged emails and I emailed, 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 and then never heard back from him. And then I finally heard from the casting director of all my children. Cause I left, I, I did like one last email and I was like, listen, I don't want to go to college. I know what I want to be an actress. Like, please, like, just just help me if you can. Mm-hmm. And he ended up, I ended up getting a call from the casting director. And then, yeah, I, I, I flew out to New York, met with the casting director. And then he just gave me some small speaking roles on the show. And that's how it all started. So it's, and it's cute because when I was doing Dancing with the Stars, Aiden, you know, was, mm-hmm. was, uh, he did an interview with them. And so, but yeah, he was he was the first person that I met that helped me. And, and I went to New York when I was 18, 19. And then I flew to Los Angeles after that to pursue more on like film TV. Yeah, it, there's always like one person who really just mm-hmm. kind of gave you your big break. Mine was a news director named Ian Rubin. And then before that, it was my mm-hmm. high school drama teacher who was like, you should go into broadcasting because he kept casting me as the narrator in all of our productions, <laughs> even though right. I wanted to act. But I was not an <laughs> actress. Did you have any? So you said you weren't in theater. But you always knew you kind of wanted to go into acting. Had mm-hmm. you had any t- formal training at this time? You were waitressing. By the way, where were you waitressing? I know this is seven questions in one. Oh, no. It's a, I mean, in Michigan, it was at the Greek Island um, in Rochester. So that's, that's where I, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then in New York, I waitressed at um, the W Hotel. Okay. Yeah. I, and then I then I waitressed in LA at the Grove. I mean, I was I was everywhere. I was like Joe's Crab Shack. I mean, like just like everywhere. Hustling. You were hustling to make yeah. it work. Okay. So yeah. did you have any formal training? You said you weren't in theater at the time. No, there was this guy named Stephen Black. He was um he was an agent mm-hmm. in Chicago and he would come up and he would do these classes in Detroit. But it, I mean, it was like me and like 40 year old men. Like it was, you know, we would read these scripts and it was like and Stephen would just be yelling at us, like, get up. Why would you sit there? Like, get up. Like, he was like an Abby Lee Miller, uh-huh. like, acting coach. Oh, but he was so good. He was all about, like, the real moment. He's like, and he'd get in your face and you just start crying. I mean, he was he was incredible. Like, he was so good at what he did. Mm, that's that's awesome. Did you, mm-hmm. do you describe yourself now as, like, an, an actress who loves to sing or a singer who loves to act? Like, what? Uh, I would definitely say an actress, singer. Okay. Like, I would say, like, actress first and singer. Um, just because, you know, I, I love singing, but I don't think I'm as comfortable with it as, as I am with acting. Yeah. What, what kind of projects do you have coming up um, in the TV film realm? Do you have any? Yeah. So I shot a movie. I was, I was not supposed to be pregnant in the movie. So we were, Oops. we had to, um, I know the last week he's like, can you put an extra pair of Spanx on? And I'm like, listen, buddy, you're lucky that I'm pregnant yeah. uh-huh. <laughs> that you're saying that. Uh-huh. <laughs> no, but he was, he was the greatest director ever. Uh, I just did that movie. I can't say what it is yet, but that's going to come out later this year. Um, and then I've got another movie called 72 Hours Ooh. with Cam Gijene. Um, He plays my husband uh, in that. And uh, so that's coming out hopefully later this year as well. And then this, there's a strike. So yes. and I'm pregnant. So <laughs> things are on hold right now. But next year, I'm excited to kind of get back at it. And then music wise, I'll have an EP coming out uh, next year. Obviously, my podcast wind down I do with my, you know, me and my girls that you were on, mm-hmm. and then um, my ne- the next chapter book comes out in October. Yeah. So, do you have a dream co star that you'd love to star alongside? Yes, of? Um, I am wildly obsessed with. Um, now I can see his face, Jason Bateman. I just love him so much love. that I just. I don't even care if I would just say one word in a film with him, uh-huh. but I saw him one time at a park in. Los Angeles, I was he's swinging Jolie on a little swing and I look over and I go, oh my God, hi. And I just, that's just like what came out. 
And he was like, yeah. hi, how are you? And I was like, I'm good. I'm like, you don't know me. And, and I was just like, I'm sorry. I just, I saw you. And he was just like, it's okay. Have a great day. And I was like, you too. <laughs> so I'm like, one day I want to like, like tell him that story, like on a set, like working yes. with him. Yeah. That'd be amazing. So. I love, I mean, I did, mm-hmm. my husband's obsessed with, um, what's the funny series that he's in? Oh my gosh. They're like uh, Arrested Development. My husband is oh, obsessed yeah. with that series. I loved him. I loved Ozark, but I mean, Ozark, yes. Huge. yes. And he's funny. He's Smartless. like drama. Like I love it. I love yes. Smartless. It's all of it. So good. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're birthing a lot right now. The baby's coming yeah. in November. Um, yep. You have a book coming out in October. Um, mm-hmm. You like you have these other projects the end of the year and next year. So there's still a lot on your plate. Like what are you most looking forward to in the in this next season? Honestly, I'm just my family. I mean, I know that's mm-hmm. um, kind of a cheesy thing to say, but everything has really, truly just shown me like that there's so much goodness on the, mm-hmm. on the flip side of, of, mm-hmm. of something that I never could have imagined to be possible. Um, yeah. you know, I obviously would never have signed up for a divorce, but this relationship, this family that we've now created and are creating is so much more than I can ever even like be thankful for. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just, um, there's just so much goodness and love. And so we're moving into our new house. And so just to oh, have like my two babies and then our, our baby together in this new house, like I just, I want to soak that in so much just and be so grateful and thankful for those, for, for that, mm-hmm. because I would have never imagined that was going to be a part of my story. Yeah. And your book that's coming out, I can't wait to get my hands on it. It feels really raw Sweet. just for, in reading the description, but like this, I would imagine was a very cathartic process for you, but who is this book for? What is your message to them? I mean, this book is for anyone that's just having some hard seasons and just wants to know that like there is light at the end of the tunnel. Um, because I wrote this book, you know, when I was at my lowest and I've gone back and I've revised things, but you know, the, the biggest point of this book is you have to love yourself before, you know, you, you find love elsewhere. And Mm. that was just a really hard journey for me to accept that. And, but if not, I was going to keep repeating mistakes and that's what I did even post-divorce. So I, you know, I write in there, like I dated the wrong guy again and it's because I didn't love myself. And, you know, Mm -hmm. so it's just, you're going to keep repeating your patterns until you see that that's, your pattern is the problem. Yeah. When um, I was on your podcast, we talked a lot about uh, my book, You Don't Have to Carry It All, Ditch the Mom and Find a Better Way Forward. You're going to be a mom of, um, you're going to be a mom of three, Dana. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Like how old are the, how, just so you have Jolie and and Jace, or do you call him JJ? Do you call him Jace Joseph? No, I call, no, um, but Jace, I I guess I could call him JJ. I never thought of that. I have a JJ. That's Um, just his Jackson Jonathan. I like that. Mm -hmm. I call him my little bug. He's yeah. still little. Um, but he's going to be five in November and Jolie is going to be eight in, in January. Okay. That's what, yeah. that's a, so my kids were six and four when our youngest was born. And I had my youngest when I was approaching 40 and I, it was a much different pregnancy. I have to say, like, how's this mm-hmm. pregnancy been for you? It, and it's been like, really did hard. You, yeah. Yeah. It's been tough. It's like everything just hurts more too. You know what I mean? So yeah. It's just, yeah, but it's okay. Again, so grateful. Yeah. And you did, this wasn't anything that you expected or like we're looking for. It kind of came out of the blue, right? The baby. Yeah. I mean, I, I had always said like, no, I'm done. I don't want any more kids. Like, you know, even when I dated other people and people would be like, all right, well, then I don't want to date. And like, okay, like I just, I'm, I've got my two. I'm very happy. Uh, But with him, I was like, you know, it'd be something so beautiful to create something together. And, but I was like, I probably won't even work out because I've had so many miscarriages and then I was like, well, I guess we could just try. And then the first month it, wow, you know, yeah. And then, then baby, boom. And it stuck. And I was just shocked. I was like, well, it probably won't stick because none of mine have ever really stuck besides my two. The other four or five have, have gone. So, um, oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Miscarriages but are again, I think it's hard. just different, you know, the stress of what I was going mm-hmm. through with my ex, like it wasn't meant to be. Yep. Totally. I've had four mm-hmm. miscarriages, so I'm right there with you. And it, it doesn't make it any easier, but, um, you know, I've got my three babies and exactly. they're awesome. They're awesome. Yeah. So, okay. You ready for some viewer questions? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Well, that most obvious one is from Carol Ellen 17 again, because people gave me their handles and not their, you know, so <laughs> Carol Ellen wants to know, are you getting married? Well, you are engaged. So I would imagine. Yeah, we, 
We're discussing it. It's just not at the top of the list right now. I mean, we're mm-hmm. thinking maybe next year, but it's one of those things where it's like, I, I already feel like he's like my husband, mm-hmm. you know, because what we're doing together as a family and the baby. Yeah. So it's, it's something that, um, you know, eventually we will for sure. Okay. Real hard hitting question from Ski Man wants to know pancakes or waffles? Pancakes. Okay. Um, KT Bellevue wants to know any upcoming new Hallmark movies? Because you've been in several. Um, yeah, not this year, but okay. maybe next year. Oh, 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 okay. Christmas Hallmark? Can maybe. Oh, I'm like, okay. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, what do you do? Royal Gardens Charlotte. Royal Garden Charlotte wants to know this, Jana. What do you do every day that helps with the next day or the week? So is there anything you do that kind of helps get, give you a jump? Yes. Start? And my therapist has been really helpful with this. Um, I, I Everyone's always like, right? And every time I'd hear this in a podcast or my friends would say, I write like a grateful journal. I'm like, yeah, okay. Like, yeah you know, whatever. Um, but I was struggling just with like the stress of things. And, um, sometimes I can be a little doomsday and my therapist was like, you know, I think it'd be really helpful to start each morning and go like, truly, like, what are you grateful for? Mm -hmm. And it was actually doing it (laughs) and writing it down. It it really does help and kind of just sets you already on that morning and that day in a positive setting. That's awesome. And the last one, it's not really a question, but Ocean's Eleven, JKC, okay, oh, says, I just want to relay to her how happy I am for her and how moving her that's baptism sweet. was to me. Oh, Because I know I saw that baptism sweet. earlier this year. So, yeah. Jana, this has been great just talking about life. Thank and you. Be I know. You're the yes. best. I love you. You're so sweet. Thank Aww, you. You are so sweet. And I'm super happy for you. Where can people stay in touch with you? How can they reach out to you and contact you? So at Kramer Girl on Instagram, that's my handle. And then uh, JanaKramer.com has updates of tours or anything else that we're doing. And then um, Wind Down Podcast. I love the podcast too. It's great. Thank you. I Jana, appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you, girl. I just think you're the best. And let's have that euchre date soon. Euchre and some non-bubbly beverages. Yes, please. I need wine. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, mom. All right, mom. See you later. <laughs> So many ways to keep up with Jana, including her new book. It's called The Next Chapter. If you are in a dark season, I encourage you to pick a copy of this book up. And I'm going to give away a couple copies in my personal newsletter. Make sure you're signed up for that if you aren't already. You can sign up at paulaferrisofficial.com. Again, paulaferrisofficial.com. Conversations and content to help you live your best life. And speaking of best life, you guys, I'm living my best life because next week I'm in conversation with Whoopi Goldberg. Yes, the Whoopi Goldberg. You're going to hear some stories you've never heard about Whoopi before, including how she got the nickname Whoopi and finding her big break as a single mom. That's all next week. Oh, one more thing. Is this still on? Yeah, it is. If you're watching on YouTube right now, hit that subscription button or wherever you're listening, make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss a beat and invite your friends. Let's spread the word and let's talk about it. 